I just wanted to give a shout out to Ron Keith, one of our mutual friends, who uh, whose post on LinkedIn put me on to you guys and uh, highlighted the the recent Series A round you've done. Ron's kind of the Beyonce of the uh, supply chain industry, bit of a rock star, <laughs> um, and a bit That's of a right. diva sometimes, maybe, but uh, but a great guy. So thanks, <laughs> Ron, for doing that. Sonia, start by giving me a brief um, background on yourself and on the um, vision of Pano, if that's uh, not too much. Sure, absolutely. Uh, hi, uh, Philip, thanks so much for having me. And thank you also to Ron, Keith, Beyonce for uh, for connecting us. Um, uh, I'm Sonia, the CEO of Pano. And I, I've spent my whole career uh, at the intersection of technology, business, and government. Um, I mm -hmm. early in my career, um, I worked in campaigns and uh, uh, worked in city government under Michael Bloomberg. I was a physics major in college and always had a love of technology and hardware. Um, and and then I've spent most of my career working in one startup after the next in supply chain and manufacturing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so. Excited to be meeting a fellow manufacturing uh, whiz over here. Yep. Um, and you know, after uh, I worked in in, I actually moved out to California in 2007 to get involved in the first uh, climate tech wave or green energy. It was it was called back then. And I joined a solar company. It was one of many venture backed solar companies at the time. And uh, I, over the years, I worked um, in both clean tech off and on, as well as in the burgeoning field of Internet of Things, you know, smart homes okay. and wearables. Uh, I spent some time at Nest, where I worked on the, both the Nest thermostat, but also the Nest Cam, which was uh, one of the first AI cameras back in 2014. It could tell the difference between your dog and an intruder. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was kind of the inspiration for Pano. Um, after years of working uh, in startups as an executive, I, I was really interested in founding a company solving the problem of climate change adaptation, uh, which is, is how are we as humans going to mm. adapt to the climate change that's already here? Uh, there, there is a resurgence in interest and in, 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 in venture investment into slowing down and reversing the effects of climate change, mm. but none of those solutions are gonna be a silver bullet that are gonna reverse climate change overnight. And so in, in the meantime, we need a dual track. You know, we need yeah. smart people also working on how are we going to cope with the effects of climate change that are already here? And, and so I was starting, you know, we started, uh, I paired up with a old friend of mine, Arvind Satyam. He had been a sales executive uh, at Cisco where he had um, led some uh, really exciting uh, smart cities uh, deals, uh, like wiring up the entire city of Barcelona. He's also Australian uh, and um, had just, you know, experienced the bushfire devastation um, from 2019. Um, you know, we were, you know, had been experiencing years and years of, of wildfire devastation in California. And we set out to um, understand the needs. Uh, and as we spoke to leaders in the wildfire space uh, from government utilities, uh, uh, private um, uh, nonprofit, academia, we just heard repeatedly a chorus of calls for more technology. Send us mm. drones, send us uh, satellites, send us cameras, send us AI, you know, send us you know, uh, SaaS, better SaaS software tools. And, mm. and Arvind and I looked at each other, we said, this is what we do. Like we know a lot about this and, and, and we decided to step up and, and we assembled a team of technology professionals from companies like, like Nest, Cisco, eBay, Tesla, Apple, um, and, and uh, decided to harness cutting edge technologies to build world-class solutions for, for firefighters, first responders, and emergency managers. Okay. Okay. And, the, and the, the, the product is actually, the hardware is, hardware is a 360 high definition camera, uh, and the service is early identification, which is obviously absolutely um, fundamental to protection against the devastation. Um, there's a lot to unpack in that introduction. Great introduction. Um, let's go back to one of the very first things, which was that you are working in this area that you refer to as climate change adaptation. And I think that's huge because what I've noticed in the last three years probably is startups I've worked with and, and VC funds I've worked with have been very excited by um, stuff that does relate to climate change. But I think they, as you mentioned, have been less concerned about the adaptation products because maybe they're not the big story, maybe they're not the long-term thing, but they're hugely important in the short term. You've done this successful raise 
Have you found that VC firms have come round to thinking much more about those adaptations as, as both important and, and good opportunities? The wave is coming of mm. investment and climate change adaptation. I think we're on the front end edge of the wave. Uh, you know, when we um, when we founded Pano, I think there were there were maybe zero uh, funds that had climate change adaptation stated mm. in their thesis. You know, and mm. and now there are there are a couple uh, uh, you know dedicated funds as well as I think a number of climate funds had have added adaptation to their their um, thesis. But when we were out raising our Series A, often we were the first uh, adaptation company that that this that funds had met with, even if they were focused on climate change. There is a recognition that that uh, technology solutions are needed. We're on the bleeding edge of, of mm. saying, you know, this is what adaptation means. This is how technology can help. Um, and this is why VC should be investing and why why there are going to be venture scale returns. You talk about getting all these big minds together from all these companies and these these great CVs and great backgrounds makes perfect sense. But you've got to have some foundational technology that is that is developing and reaching maturity that intersects with the need that you've recognized. Is the time right for that? Yes, absolutely. You know, in the world of hardware, uh, timing is everything. It is all about mm. uh, integrating technologies, uh, multiple technologies as those technologies are mature. You know, the mm. i the iPod was only possible because of memory technology and touch technology uh, and display technology. We are kind of a tech forward company that's on the hunt for enabling technologies that we can integrate in. So we, we use uh, both imaging satellites as well as the comm satellites like Starlink, we just announced a partnership with T-Mobile to be one of their um, 5G for good use cases where, you know, mm -hmm. we're harnessing, we're, we're an early enterprise application of 5G, which allows us to um, stream higher throughput video and um, extend deeper into the forest. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we leverage cutting edge uh, SaaS software tools, cloud compute, artificial computer vision, artificial intelligence, and, you know, synthetic data techniques that were just not available even two or three years ago, um, we're, we're out, you know, deploying each one as it becomes available today. Yeah. And you're, you're quite a substantial way through the journey, which is impressive. You've already got deployments in place. Tell me a bit about those and what you're learning from those. We launched the company uh, in 2020. Uh, 2021 was our, our first year in market with our solution mm -hmm. where we did a number of pilots in both U.S. and uh and Australia. And that was around really proving out that all aspects of the solution worked, the hardware, the software, the AI. Uh, once we did that, this year in 2022, we we started ramping commercial deployments mm. for scale. Um, and we're now in five states in the US as well as two states in Australia. We have proven that this is a repeatable process. We can uh, we can find lo you know appropriate locations on high vantage points that mm -hmm. we can mount to you know with uh, with rapid with short lead times rapid deployment. Um, we've we've proven out multiple connectivity solutions so that we can um, get you know upload uh, in even in remote environments and and the you know the software and the AI all of it is delivering mm -hmm. value and we're, we're hearing from fire chiefs and and first responders you know that this solution is is terrific it's really helping mm. them to marshal a more effective and rapid response uh, to new ignitions and contain and stop fires in their tracks yeah and that's the that's the you know the absolute point of it isn't it is to get there as as early as possible your customers are typically the states the firefighters themselves the authorities we offer um uh uh early fire detection and fire situational awareness uh, as a service. And so we, you know, we have a, a full stack solution, hardware, software, AI deployment, um, a human monitoring center, um, but, but all of that is kind of behind the scenes for our customers. For our customers, they just get pushed alerts of new fire incidents and, and can open up their phone or computer and see uh, a live video of the incident and share it as needed. And this um, solution, uh, we sell this fire intelligence to a variety of customer types. Uh, we sell to government, um, city, county, state, federal government, um, but mm -hmm. we also sell to um, private enterprises like utilities, uh, like uh, timber companies, um, like um, 
uh, a large private landowners uh, mm. or, or owners of, of major, major infrastructure who need to have information to safeguard their assets and, and uh, to optimize their operations in the face of these threats. And you've just raised a substantial Series A, Series B somewhere in yes, the future. Yes, we just raised but a $20 million Series, Series A. And a. B, you kind of set yourself some goals. What are, what are your expectations of that period? In the short term, um, our number one goal is to uh, expand as quickly as possible so that we can mm. stop as many fires as we can. Um, you know, we have a hardened solution that's scalable. You know, we have a team that has shipped uh, millions of units of product over the years. And, yeah. uh, and, and we are just trying to uh, raise awareness uh, about, you know, the fact that our product is available and it's mature and it's ready to, to, to expand. We're also going to use the funding to uh, enrich our product offering. With each customer we work, early customer we work with, we get great product feedback and they ask for more features to help them uh, with additional situational awareness for both early fires as well as mature fires. Um, and they actually are also see opportunities to have better intelligence um, even before a fire has started. With all the data that you're getting in from the from the sites that you're monitoring, that's helping the system learn faster and um, should be achieving better outcomes. Is that part of the machine learning AI that's going on in the system? Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, we have uh, not just machine learning. We have a human in the human in the loop machine learning, which means that every AI detection is reviewed by a human analyst in our Pano Intelligence Center, uh, and and then uh, both the the true detections and the false positives are fed back into our training process and we retrain the model regularly um, and constantly are releasing better and better versions of the AI um, to uh, to you know improve our, our detection speeds for our customers and and optimize their intelligence uh, but also with with the rich uh, data we're collecting from our um, pano stations with two cameras each um, we can start to develop other you know machine learning models that that measure other important variables for our um, for our customers as well. Australia is obviously a huge market. California with the wildfires, other states in the US. Where else? What about what about Europe? Europe had a scorching hot summer with some serious um, fire disruption. Is that is that a market that you're looking at? We are a company that comes from a bunch of supply chain folks and we mm. uh, uh we love a challenge and and we're ready to go international <laughs> we're ready yeah. to go international uh, any place that where there is a need and and we have heard actually as we uh, uh announced our series a last week uh uh, as well as our T-Mobile news, we've actually been getting contacted by a number of stakeholders from multiple countries in Europe, um, expressing to us uh, how how um, tremendously um, devastating the wildfires of the past summer have been, and and that this trend must stop. And they are looking for technology solutions like Panos. Uh, so we are we are ready um, and gearing up to go um, explore uh, partnerships uh, with customers in Europe for sure. It's fascinating because, you know, more and more partners in terms of customers, but actually more and more partners like T-Mobile, the idea that there's a, a program that's 5G for good. Um, I know Intel and Accenture have a, have a program of technologies that are um, for, for positive impact. It's, it's fascinating to see these very large companies um, look to apply their technology for these, um, these more altruistic kind of projects. Are you finding being in that area, being in that environment gives you some additional opportunities? I've worked in a number of companies that have mm. uh, social missions and yeah. uh, I've you know, been fortunate to, to work at, you know, on, the, at, on businesses that have a for good mission. And I think, mm. uh, I think it does um, uh, make everything easier in some ways when your mission is so clear. It you know means we are able to attract incredibly talented team members, and we found uh, just wonderful support from corporate partners. Uh, we actually initiated our relationship with T-Mobile through a great incubator program called the 5G Open Innovation Lab, which is a collaboration okay. between T-Mobile, Microsoft, uh, Intel, um, VMware, and several several other large players, and and they have all been very supportive of and doing anything they can to support us in our mission. Fascinating project. Sonia, thanks so much for talking to me. Continued success. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And let's talk again soon. 
Sounds great. Thanks so much for having me, Phil.